Hi, it's Dwyer. GamblersAdvisory.com Free premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Obviously, I'm not as prepared for this video as I should be, but we'll roll with it. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, what I'm going to say in this video is going to be controversial to many. There's no way around it, right? But understand, I believe that the public opinion on this fight, and it's evident from the betting line, is much broader than the mainstream media has led you to believe, right? Now, first, let me say this. Yorkies Gamboa. He's unbeaten. He's 23 and 0. He's a former Olympic gold medalist. He's a World Cup champion. He's a four-time Cuban national champion. He has fought the vastly superior level of opposition than Terence Crawford has. Right? But, in my opinion, Right, even though Yorkies Gamboa is more decorated, Yorkies Gamboa skill wise does not bring to the table the level of technical brilliance that I believe Terence Crawford brings to the table. Right, the bet I'm recommending in this fight is that you consider taking Yorkies Gamboa, who is the underdog. In this fight, he's 13 to 8 in some sports dens. Check out the odds on oddschecker.com. Take your keys, Gamboa by KO. But you need to hedge the play with Terrence Crawford to win the fight. Right? I'm not sure who wins the fight. I'm not. But what I think I'm sure of is that Terence Crawford is the better boxer. If these two guys are squared up across from each other with nowhere to go, and they actually have to reveal punch patterns and trade punches, Terence Crawford is going to have the upper hand. Let me point out that Gamboa has knocked out 69% of his opponents. So has Terence Crawford. They have identical KO records. But understand, the similarities end there. Right? Gamboa is an ambush fighter. Let's talk about it. He's one of the prototypical ambush fighters and punchers in the sport. Now, when I say an ambush fighter, what I'm talking about is a guy who, in my opinion, and I understand he's won several big fights by decision, but in my opinion, I don't think he can stand and trade with you. I think he's episodic, right? I think the showboating hides a lack of some skills. Right? His talent is in standing outside of your range, right? Not throwing punches, then jumping in and being able to load up on punches, go from 0 to 60 quickly, right? There's no warm up period. When you look at a Gamboa fight, you're going to notice he's lounging around, then he comes in and it's all power shots right think I'm just gonna name some ambush fighters understand some of these guys can do other things right Jean Pascal I understand Pascal showed a lot of head movement and a lot of savvy in his last fight against Lucien Boutte right but understand prime Pascal is the kind of guy who can knock down Bernard Hopkins multiple times, not once but twice in their first fight, 
because Pascal's not showing you a lot of his angles, right? His punches, where they're coming from. He literally just jumps in and is throwing bombs, right? A chess player like Hopkins, who's relying on figuring out the angles, got bombed out, right? Early. Hopkins had to get off the canvas, get the draw, get us to the next fight, where he dominates Jean Pascal, right? David Hay is another big time ambush fighter, right? Ambush fighters are guys who have one punch knockout power in both hands. They tend to be lower volume. What they're doing is they're biding their time. They don't want to engage you. They don't want to trade punches with you because in my opinion it's easier for them to just come in and show you their offense. Right? Many of these guys, by the way, have bad stamina because they're episodic. They haven't trained themselves to fight all three minutes of every round. Right? Also, mentally, they're operating differently. Keep in mind, there's a technique in being an ambush fighter. Right? Whereas a Marquez or a Mayweather is conscious for three minutes of every round, right? Whether they're throwing punches or whether they're watching you, the point is they're watching you. That's the mental toughness. Bernard Hopkins, right? He's watching you, he's noticing patterns. These guys are the safe crackers of the sport, right? Ambush fighting's different. Ambush fighting is where you're standing around. If you have a jab, that jab is just to create distance, right? It's not to be the first part of a combination, right? Nor is it designed to bludgeon the opponent, right? Ambush fighters, Roy Jones, right? In fact, I consider Roy Jones to be the father of this technique. These ambush fighters are just throwing a perfunctory jab. It's the opposite of a Carlos Monzon jab or a Larry Holmes jab, where those guys are literally taking you out with the jab. It's the opposite of an Ali jab or a Lennox Lewis jab, where they're literally trying to jab you so they can come in with, you know, the right hand. They can you know, position themselves so they can, the jab gets you in place so they can throw an uppercut or they can throw an anchor punch or they can lean in and throw a right hand. Think Vladimir Klitschko, right? With ambush fighters, the jab is just to keep you busy and away from them. It's perfunctory. You know, you'll notice these guys just going like this. Look at some Roy Jones fights late in his career, right? Jones evolved into this style where they're just going like this just to look busy on the scorecard, right? But they're not busting you up with the jab. As I've said, the way to beat an ambush fighter is to follow him after the ambush. The reason I don't know who wins this fight is there's a height gap here, right? And ambush fighters right, are sudden. In other words, Yorkies Gamboa, who knows whether Terence Crawford is going to fall into the problem that Bernard Hopkins had early against Jean Pascal. In other words, the longer you're in the ring with an ambush fighter, the more you figure them out. Right? Vladimir Klitschko, David Hay, it's an interesting fight. It's actually one of the most interesting fights, in my opinion, on tape Vladimir Klitschko has had. David Hay had his chances at a KO. But you'll notice as that fight progressed, Vladimir Klitschko knew to just put a hand up by his chin. Right? Because David Hay is primarily a headhunter. Right? So when David Hay comes in and flashes the punch, understand, had Hay just staggered it 
once and caught Klitschko clean once, I think David Hay would have taken his title. That's how close moments of that fight are. But when David Hay comes in, and he does come in with some right hands, Vladimir Klitschko is able to block it because you knew Hay was not coming into the body. Right? You knew Hay was going for the knockout up top. And Vladimir Klitschko had the jab. Right? To keep David Hay busy. And Klitschko's jab is stiff. Well, let me just say, the only question I have in this fight is whether Yorkis Gamboa early in the fight is able to pull a Jean Pascal. The fight's going to be in Nebraska, right? The home of Malcolm X, for historians here watching this video, the home of Terrence Crawford. It's going to be in Terrence Crawford's back yard. The crowd's going to be pro Crawford. Only one of these fighters is defensively gifted and it's the taller man Terence Crawford. Right? But understand Terence Crawford is like Marquez. Right? He's going to be in there reading things. What I want people to do is look at the first round of Marquez Pacquiao. The very first round. As I like to say here online, we would not have had the four fights that we had if Joe Cortez had pulled the plug after the third knockdown of that first round. It would have just been Manny Pacquiao blows out Marquez. Understand that's the risk you run when you're dealing with one of these technician type guys who is in there trying to read the lay of the land and the angles, right? Just like Hopkins against Pascal. Marquez against Juan Diaz, the first fight. Against Manny Pacquiao, the first fight. As I said, these ambush fighters start to look simple if you can get by the early rounds, right? Marquez gets blown by Manny Pacquiao in that first round. Can't figure out the angles. Ambush fighters are throwing punches from unorthodox angles quickly. Right? And of course Marquez keeps running into Pacquiao's left hand. He can't figure out the angle. I know Bernard Hopkins wants people to believe he was hit in the back of the head uh, for the second knockdown against Pascal the first time. The point is, Bernard Hopkins was getting roughed up. He was getting overwhelmed early. It takes a while for a technician to get the technique in place. There is a possibility in this fight that Yorkis Gamboa lands and drops Terrence Crawford, who himself has an identical record and an identical 69% KO ratio to Yorkies Gamboa, there is the possibility that Crawford takes a few rounds to figure out the angles and can't deal with the two-handed hand speed. It's above average hand speed, just like it is with Hay, just like it is with Pascal. It's heavy power, just like it is with Hay, just like it is with Pascal, right? Crawford is going to have to figure out the lay of the land early. If he does that, what he's going to find is a shorter guy who likes to come up top with hooks, who's episodic, who is defensively limited, who has been dropped in fights. Take a look at the Orlando Salido fight, for example. Gamboa has no defense when he gets dropped. Gamboa drops his hands, and then you'll see him dancing and showboating, that's because what else is he going to do? He's not a defensive wizard. He's not a guy who's rolling with punches, who can kind of like put on a defensive show. Right? He's not that guy. So what's he going to do? He's going to showboat. He's going to look like he's in control because he has to fill in the inactive parts of rounds. Right? One of the things that people need to realize is when you strip away the highlights from these ambush fighters, 
you're going to be surprised at how low volume they are. Take a look at the copy box numbers for the Vladimir Klitschko David Hay fight. So I believe that if the taller man here, Terence Crawford, is able to survive the early episodic aggression of Yorkies Gamboa, and understand the size gap is huge here, folks, it's more than two inches, right? If he's able to deal with the shorter man coming in and out the gate throwing concussive hooks, throwing knockout punches, right? Hand speed, both hands. If Crawford, who's an angles guy, is able to figure out how to smother one hand and block the other, then Crawford should take over this fight in the middle rounds and hand Yorkies Gamboa his first loss. Right? Understand, this is a battle of unbeatens. This is high risk. Neither of these guys has ever lost. So you have a style matchup here, and it's a little bit different than what we're accustomed to. Understand, as great as Miguel Cotto was this last weekend, as great as Manny Pacquiao has been, right? Those guys are one-handed. Understand, David Hay, Jean Pascal, as good as their dominant hands are, as dominant a puncher as David Hay is with his right hand. Understand he hits Nikolai Valuev with his left hand, and I would argue that left hand is the hardest punch Nikolai Valuev has ever faced. Yorkis Gamboa, a righty, throws a very wicked left hand. And understand, if you're a safe cracker and you're looking for a combination, it's very hard when the ambush fighter is not sitting at the table with you, right? Yorkies Gamboa is there, then he's not there, right? Don't look at Yorkies Gamboa's punching power. Look at his feet. He moves a lot more in the ring than you think. His feet are his defense. So Crawford's going to have to pick a side. He's going to have to say, okay, I need to stay on Gamboa's right side. He needs to smother one of the hands. He needs to come inside. He needs to, if he can, since he has the height advantage, pump a jab like Vladimir Klitschko did just to keep the ambush fighter busy and off rhythm, right? Then he needs to go about figuring out when Gamboa is going to start an ambush. He needs to have his hands up, right? Because Gamboa's best punches are up top. He needs to duck his head, and he needs to come forward. I think he pulls it all off. If I had to make one bet in this fight, it would be on Terrence Crawford to win the fight. But of course, I'm going to hedge the play because I'm not confident enough. Gamboa is a scary puncher. What often happens in Gamboa fights is you'll notice that after he lands a few power shots, after he knocks down the opponent a couple of times, the opponent pretty much gives up. The opponent himself becomes an ambush fighter because the opponent doesn't want to stay in front of Gamboa. So the bet I'm recommending is Gamboa by KO hedged with Crawford simply to win the fight. You're not going to get rich on this fight. Let me point out too, as I said earlier, as dazzling as Crawford is a boxing technician, and I've posted a video of Ricky Burns after he lost to Crawford, where in the post-fight video he mentions that Crawford, you know, uh, is technical, right? As dazzling as Crawford is technically, and he's dazzling, look at the KO percentage. 
and look at the fact that Gamboa has gone down in multiple fights. I think it's too risky to take Crawford by knockout, right? But I also think it's too risky not to. So that's why I'm pushing a low margin hedge here of Crawford to win, hedged with Gamboa by KO. Let me say this. I'm aware of the fact that Gamboa recently has been winning fights by unanimous decision. I'm aware of the fact that against Orlando Salido, he got two points taken away and he still won by unanimous decision. I don't see him getting a decision against Crawford. That's the risk I'm willing to take. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.